Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my live. I'll wait a few minutes to let people uh, log in. I know there's a slight delay, so I'll give it a few minutes. If you're watching this live stream, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Also, um, if you'd like to be a patron, I have a Patreon account. Um, it's patreon.com forward slash urban farm sister. Um, it would really help if you guys would become patrons. I can keep the content coming if you guys subscribe, you know, to my uh, Patreon or to my YouTube channel. Hey, yo, folk three, how are you doing? If you're still in here, I see you at, came in at about 542. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about the poultry industry. Um, on Monday, we talked about chickens and we, you know, we discussed anatomy and things. Now today we're going to actually talk about eggs. So today's outline, we're going to talk about being an agricultural inspector. Then we're going to talk about the egg industry. And after that, um, uh, there's some additional lessons if you decide to uh, purchase the course on my school website. Um, I can get, in talk to, get into talking about how to grade eggs, understanding carton labels, um, also uh, the different types of egg producing operations. Um, things like, you know, free range versus, you know, conventional and things going through that whole process, explaining what that means and, and what that means as far as the birds, uh, their quality of life and things like that. Um, but those those particular lessons are available. Or they will be available. I haven't uploaded all that information yet on the school website if you def decide to buy the entire poultry industry course. So recap of last class which was Monday, um, and that video is on my YouTube if you decide uh, you'd like to watch it. Um, we talked about being a poultry scientist. We learned about the poultry industry and what that is. We learned about chicken anatomy. We also learned about the different types of chickens uh, and the chickens that are used in production. And then we did um, some presentation of breeds and, you know, we discussed, um, you know, just how it is to own a chicken and things that you need to know and, and uh, be aware of. So anybody have any questions from last week? Or not last week, Monday. I'm tripping. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna to talk about agricultural inspector. Um, so agricultural inspector, they make sure businesses are complying with federal and state laws and regulations. Uh, that govern the health, quality, and safety of meat, poultry, and egg products, fruits, and vegetables. They also inspect food and meat, um, meat processing plants to ensure that the facilities meet quality standards. Um, so this is a position that you could actually hold um, in the poultry industry. You wouldn't actually have to own your own chickens and things like that, but you can actually be involved with the whole process of, you know, inspecting meat, or inspecting eggs or making sure facilities are doing what they're supposed to do as, as far as keeping the public safe uh, from, you know, consuming their products and things. So I have a short little video here of um, what an uh, agriculture inspector does that actually goes and inspects um, egg uh, laying facilities. So I'll go ahead and play. I hope the sound works. If not, uh, you can actually watch the video um, in the on the school website if you purchase the course.
Hilliker's Ranch Fresh Eggs has been around for some time. Got started by my grandparents in 1942 in Encanto, California. They started with uh, chickens and rabbits, and they moved out here, and they focused on chickens. This place uh, only had a capacity of about three or 4,000 chickens when they bought it. It now has a capacity of 25,000 chickens. According to Frank, it's a small operation, but it still goes through the same inspection process as larger facilities. And that's where Annie Silva comes in. I'm here at the Hillikers Egg Ranch to perform egg quality inspection. She knows a little bit about inspection. I've been with the county for 13 years. I'm, I do egg inspection, uh, farmer's market inspection. The list goes on and on. She's become a regular at most places. I go to different locations where they pack and process eggs where they do retails of eggs. This is a handling light where we can hold the eggs in front of it and check the inside of the egg. And we can adjust this according to the intensity of light that we, that we need. One of the first things she does is check the temperature in the coolers. The required temperature should be 45 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or less. The thermometer will sit for a while. Now it's on to the eggs. I'm examining this one. I look at the labels of the eggs and the expiration date, the pack date, the brand name, the sizes, the labels, the point of origin where the eggs came from. And after that, it's time to check for quality. I only take 100 samples. What I'm doing here is I am candling the eggs against this light to see for to look for cracks, to look for leaks dirt, mold, and to look inside for their air cell. That's the air cell. The bigger the air cell, the older the egg. We have this gauge to look at the air cell. And actually, at this point, this air cell is within the tolerance of the quality of the egg. These are large eggs. This egg should be at least 54.34 grams. I used to be a public school teacher teaching vocational agriculture to high school students. That was in the Philippines, and though she's not teaching anymore, she can still educate the public. Consumers should look, should always look at the expiration date and buy eggs at a reliable retail store and make sure they are refrigerated. At this level of inspection and a production level, this sample pass, I found only five checks out of 100 that I inspected and the tolerance is five percent for every 100 sample of eggs not a bad showing today for a facility that cranks out 12,000 eggs per day every time i show up they know that oh here we are again but they understand what i do and they correct whatever errors i see and whatever I, errors i find they're always cooperative with me. in the county news center i'm jose Villanueva. Okay, so that's what an agricultural inspector would do if they were doing egg uh, uh, quality checks and things like that. Like I said, the agricultural inspector um, position can, you know, cover many different areas. It can cover meat, fruit, vegetables, eggs, poultry, all types of things. Um, her specialty is eggs. Like I say, other people can specialize in other things as well. But this is a position that someone can hold if they wanted to work in the agricultural industry and say they didn't actually want to own chickens, but they wanted to work for poultry, um, they could be an agricultural inspector. You know, on Monday, we talked about being a uh, poultry scientist. And again, you don't have to actually own chickens, but you can be involved with the research and things that, you know, better the chickens, better the meat, better the eggs, uh, uh, their overall uh, quality of health and their genetics and things like that. So there's a lot of positions within the agriculture industry that, you know, don't necessarily involve you farming. You can be in research and science, inspection, medicine, all types of things. So that's what I try to do with Agricademy. Um, besides the research that I do, I try to go and show, you know, youth in particular, but also adults as well, that there's a lot of opportunity in this field beyond just farming. So we're going to talk a little bit about commercial egg production.
All right, so commercial egg production. In the United States, a person eats about 240 eggs per year. Um, this data came from, I think, from about 2010. So I found some data today. I just didn't update it. I think they say people, the average person eats about 279 eggs now, almost 300 eggs a year. So what does that look like? Well, 248 eggs looks like this. <clears throat> So that's what 248 eggs look like. So I have a little math problem, if anybody's there and they can hear. Um, how many dozens is that a year? Uh, per one person is, you know, suggested that one person will consume if you eat eggs. Um, there are millions of people that do eat eggs. I know there's a lot of people that do not. Um, people that are uh, veg uh, vegans and things like that, they may not consume eggs. But um, on average, there's millions of people in the United States that eat eggs. So to solve this problem, if you were, you know, elementary student, you would take the number of eggs and you would divide it by 12 eggs that are in a dozen and you would get 20.667, which is about 21 dozens. Um, so that's how many eggs on average um, a person eats each year. So for commercial egg production, these are the top five egg producing states. We have Iowa. Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and California. These are the largest egg producing states and they house approximately 50% of the egg laying hens here in the United States. Uh, in 2019, about 113.25 billion eggs were produced in the United States. The US has about 340 million commercial laying egg hens at one time. Um, each hen produces from 250 to 300 eggs a year. And, you know, we talked about that on Monday when I talked about how uh, chickens go about laying um, and how the commercial chickens, they have a light kept on them all year long. So that's how they can produce that many eggs uh, throughout the years because they constantly have light. And I remember I told you guys that they lay eggs based off light availability during the day. So if you supplement artificial lighting, you trick their bodies into thinking that it's still sunny outside for a certain amount of time, and so they'll keep producing eggs, and they won't go through that molt. Yes, yo, folks, that's correct, 20.6, so it's about 21 um, uh, dozens of eggs that a person would eat. So some products that contain eggs, so say you don't outright go and buy um, a carton of eggs. There are many products that you purchase that do contain eggs. So things like baked goods, mayonnaise, fried foods, you know, to get the, um, you know, the, the crispiness on the chicken and things. They use egg whites and things like that um, to adhere the flour or whatever your breading you're trying to do. Um, crackers, cookies, pudding, pasta is made with eggs. You take flour and you take eggs and you mix them together and you can make pasta that way. Um, Marshmallows, tartar sauce, frosting, uh, some candies actually have eggs. Uh, eggs are also used for coating certain things. Um, and then it's also used for vaccines. So can anybody tell me a particular vaccine that relies heavily on eggs, not just for the vaccine itself, but for also for research? Can anybody think of something? And I'll just wait a second because I know there's a delay. Yes, do you know any vaccines, yo folks, uh, that uh, use eggs in its production? So you guys can answer in the comments. I'll go on. Um, so how do hens go about reproducing eggs? So, so we're going to talk about the hen reproduction, physiology, and the egg formation inside the hen. Um, like I told you on Monday, chickens do not need roosters there to actually lay eggs. They just need roosters there to actually fertilize eggs so that um, you can get more chickens. 
But for a chicken to produce an egg, what happens is a process. It takes about 24 to 27 hours. Uh, so it takes a pretty much a whole day for a chicken to produce an egg. That's why they can produce one every day. So for the chicken to lay down the yolk, which is right here, um, it takes about a half an hour. Yolk, the yolk is released into the oviduct. Three hours later, the egg white forms around the yolk and grows. The shell membranes are added to the egg. Shape is formed. The shell, uh, that takes about an hour for that to occur. Uh, the egg white formation takes about three hours. Um, then 20 hours it takes for the shell to actually form. So this is where the shell that's on the outside of the egg is forming. It takes about 20 hours for that to be laid down on top of the egg. Um, after that, uh, right before the egg is laid, a cuticle layer called the bloom is added, and then the egg is laid, and it comes out the chicken's cloaca, which is the vent area that we talked about on um, Monday. So nobody knew a vaccine that contained eggs. I'm surprised. Uh oh. <clears throat> All right, so like I said, an egg takes about 23 to 27 hours to form, and then, it's, then it will be laid. The shorter the time it takes the hen to form an egg, the more days in a row a hen will lay an egg. Uh, the number of days in a row that a hen lays an egg is referred to as a clutch size. The term used for the parts of the hen where the egg is created is called the oviduct. So then we have a picture of the reproductive system of an egg, um, sorry, of a hen. Um, I don't like this picture because it acts like the reproductive system goes all the way up into like the thoracic area of the chicken, but indeed it does not. Um, it actually is more back here towards the, you know, it's in the abdominal cavity of the chicken. Um, but basically we have an ovary, we have the oviduct, the ovary releases an egg, uh, the yolk of the egg into the oviduct and it travels down into um, it travels throughout this oviduct system, and that's when all the things are laid on there, the albumin, the the membranes, the shell, all that stuff. And then um, <clears throat> at the end, like I said, that bloom is added, and then the egg is laid out of the cloaca. So anybody have any questions about how chickens go about laying eggs or anything that I've talked about so far? As far as, uh, Agricultural inspector, um, the states that are the top producing states of eggs. Any any other questions about that? No. Um, Chicken pox was the actual virus for chicken pox is called varicella. It is not made with made with using eggs. So think of some more vaccines that we get. All right. So how can you tell what egg color egg a hen will lay? So we talked about this on Monday too. Um, but again, you look at the ears. So if a chicken has blue looking ears, um, they most likely will lay a blue or, or bluish green looking egg. If they have red or reddish brown looking ears, um, they'll, that, those, that means that chicken will lay uh, brown eggs. And if they have white ear earlobes, that means that chicken will most likely lay white eggs. Now, there are some exceptions to the rules, but usually this, this you know, holds true pretty much for the chickens as well as um, the what color shell their egg is actually going to have. So remember on Monday when I talked about, um, you know, if one egg is better than the other, in reality, they're not. Um, it's just that, you know, farmers are trying to recoup some of that loss that they would they would uh, actually go through uh, when they produce those chickens that make those brown eggs. The chickens are bigger, so they eat a lot more feed. So what happens is the farmers came up with this whole campaign that you know, they try to act like brown eggs were more nutritious and they were more this, that, and the other. Um, 
so that they could, you know, give it a higher cost. But in reality, they're no different than the white eggs or the blue eggs or the green eggs. They're all the same. The egg is there to produce another chicken if it's fertilized. So they are all are going to have the same nutrients because those nutrients in there are actually for the developing embryo. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some egg anatomy. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of components to an egg. You know, when you crack one open, most people are not even thinking about, you know, the things that are in there that they actually serve a purpose. For the most part, if you're cracking open an egg, you're either going to use it to cook with or you're going to use it, you know, to eventually eat or you're going to use it for some other means, whatever it is. Um, but for the most part, most people don't really take into account the um, – all the components that go into this egg beyond just, you know, the chicken laying it, like each one of these things serve a purpose for the, you know, the survivability of a chick that may develop inside of there. So we're going to go through each one of these parts. So this is how it looks when you crack open an egg. Um, there's all these different components. I'll go back to this other picture. So we have the shell out here on the outside. That's where we also find the bloom. We have the yolk. We have membranes. We have inner shell membranes. We have calaisy here. Um, we have thick albumin, thin albumin. And we have the germinal disc. And we have the inner thin albumin. And then we have the air cell. So we'll talk about all those pieces now. So the eggshell, the eggshell has more than 7,000 tiny pores that allow oxygen to pass into the egg and carbon dioxide to escape. So when the embryo is developing, it's actually breathing inside of there. Um, so you have to have gas exchange so that it does not become, uh, you know, too toxic in there with um, carbon and, you know, carbon, carbon dioxide and things because what happens is that could suffocate the, uh, the embryo that's developing. Uh, the shell is mostly made of calcium carbonate. The bloom, which is, is also known as the cuticle, is a natural, naturally seals the egg shell pores. Uh, the reason this bloom is there, it prevents bacteria from getting inside the shell and it reduces moisture from uh, leaving the egg so the egg doesn't dry out. <clears throat> so in the picture at the bottom here, uh, we have the... Uh, the bloom is still on the egg, so it has this shiny appearance to it. Here in the United States, when we actually go and when they process eggs at commercial farms, they'll wash them. And what happens is they wash that bloom layer off. And so um, when they wash that bloom layer off, then it loses that natural ability to prevent microorganisms from entering into there and also prevents, you know, moisture from leaving the egg. So that's why we have to refrigerate them. If they did not wash that bloom layer off, we would still be able to, you know, just have the egg sitting out um, and you could use it for a short period of time without it having to be refrigerated. But once you wash that bloom off, you take away that protection that keeps microorganisms from getting inside of that egg. Yeah, so the air cell eggs, you say egg shells have pores. This is crazy. Yes, it has 7,000 7, little tiny holes in there that allow for gas exchange. Um, and so, yeah, if you look at it on the microscope, you can see those little holes in there. So now I'm going to talk about the shell membranes. These are the inner and outer membranes found between the egg shell and the egg white. Uh, this, keep, this keeps bacteria from entering the egg. Uh, so say the egg, the bacteria got past the shell uh, because, we, you know, we washed the bloom off and so it was able to get through there. There's still another membrane inside the actual egg that prevents uh, bacteria from getting, bacteria and other microorganisms from getting into the egg itself and, you know, could, that could potentially kill the embryo. Um, this also helps slow evaporation and moisture from leaving the egg. So that inner membrane, if you crack open an egg and you have that inner membrane, uh, it's that, that little white outer layer, like right by the shell. It's kind of like flimsy and it, it kind of feels, it's moist and kind of moves. I don't know how to describe it, but 
it's that layer right underneath the shell. Um, that is the, the shell's inner and outer membrane. So the air cell, the air cell is located at the large end of the egg. Uh, this holds oxygen for the developing chick so it can breathe. Um, so the air cells at the top, and uh, in a, you know, in a minute I'll show you how you can actually see that. Um, we do a thing called candling. Um, but the air cell is at the top, and this is also used to tell you the quality of the egg when you're doing an egg quality inspection. Um, the larger the egg cell, I'm sorry, the air cell usually means uh, the egg is old. Uh, so the smaller the egg air cell is, it's probably a fresher egg. Uh, when it first comes out, the air cell is small, um, but as that egg starts to age, that air cell will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and then that'll, that'll be an indication that this egg is probably old. So here we have a cracked open egg. I've, I've taken the, um, the insides out. And so now we're gonna talk about these components. Um, the albumin, which is also known as the egg white. Uh, there's thick albumin, and there's thin albumin. So thick albumin is the albumin that's right below where the yolk would sit. And the thin albumin is usually that watery albumin that you see when you crack open an egg and you like, you know, let it go on a plate or you, uh, you know, put it in the pan and that, that starts to sizzle when it starts to cook. Um, but this is all albumin. So the purpose of albumin is the main source of protein and also water for the embryo. So it makes sure the embryo stays hydrated. Um, it also has some proteins that the embryo as it's developing, uh, it will actually consume. The main purpose for it also is to actually cushion the egg yolk as it's floating within the cell. It keeps the, it helps keep the uh, yolk from hitting up against the shell. Um, we'll talk about another structure in a minute that actually anchors the egg into the uh, the yolk into the cell as well. I'm sorry, into the egg as well. So the yolk itself, the yolk provides food for the embryo, um, and we'll talk about the uh, germinal disc in a minute, but the actual, if the embryo was to develop, it'll develop right here on the yolk. Um, and this is where you'll see blood vessels and things develop if this egg was ever, you know, fertilized. Um, it's made up of fats, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. So this is where the developing chick would get its most of its nutrients from. Um, so you have the egg whites on the outside and you have the yolk in the middle and all this is to, to provide nutrients for the developing chick if that was in there. All right, so now we're going to talk about another structure called chalazy. So chalazy, these are cords on two sides of the yolk and what they do is they help act as anchors to keep the yolk floating in the center of the albumin. Um, so a lot of times people think this little white cord is actually a chick developing, and that is not the case. These are actual, um, they're made actual out of the same protein that the albumin is made out of, but they're turned into like a cord. And it kind of, it's kind of like two little rubber bands at each end of the yolk, and it keeps it suspended in the center of that egg. And so, you know, as a chick, as a chicken lays an egg and she and she's sitting on it, she's rolling it to make sure, you know, like the embryo doesn't sit in one position at once all at one time uh, that prevents it from like getting sealed to the side of the shell. Um, but as she's rolling it, you know, that embryo is moving inside of there and these uh, lazy, they actually help anchor that particular yolk and just keep it in the center. Um, they are not the embryo itself. I'm going to talk about the germinal disc in a minute. If the egg was actually fertilized, it would be at that position. Let's see, I got some questions over here. So I continue, see what's going on over here. Hey, Taisha. So Taisha says, Greetings, Herb Farm Sister. I just bought store eggs. Looking forward to my farm and getting my own eggs for my own, for my poultry. Well, if you have a yard now, you can have some chickens now. You don't have to wait for a farm. Um, you can get a few chickens and get them going. Um, Rose, 
Hi, Rose. How are you doing? All right, so the germinal disc. So the germinal disc is this white spot. It's very, very tiny. Let me switch screens here so I can point it out. I know the little dots there, but. So this germinal disc is this little white spot right here. Um, it's usually, it's not always directly in the middle of the yolk, but it's a little white spot that you will find on the actual yolk. So this is where uh, the female genetic material is found. So if, if she mates with a rooster and his sperm comes in and it fertilizes his egg, this is where the sperm would go. It would go to here on the egg and this is how the egg would be fertilized. And then at that point is where you would have an embryo start to develop. Um, so within two or three days of fertilization, this whole yolk would look different. It would start developing um, blood vessels and you would actually see what looks like a little heartbeat in there. If you candled the egg, you could actually see all this going on. Um, but this is where a chick would develop. Not the chalazy, not not any other spot, any any the egg. This is where you, you would have actual chick developing. So if you cut, cracked open an egg and it had a chick in there, uh, you would see it attached to this yolk. So that yolk also acts as like a um, a placenta kind of sort of in the bird's egg that it would, you know, mimic as, if you were thinking of a mammal. Um, this is where the egg, the, the chick would develop and it would be attached to this yolk uh, sac. And then what happens is it gets all its nutrients from there. Now, I told you it takes 21 days for a chicken to develop. So, you know, this this egg, uh, yolk is going to provide all those nutrients that it needs for that 21 day development. <clears throat> Let's see, I have any, any questions here. So Taisha says she had uh, I thought I needed a special zoning permit for yard birds. Not here in Cincinnati, you don't. Now, um, certain counties, maybe in Georgia, they may require it. Uh, all you have to do is go and look either at your uh, state um, Department of Agriculture website, or you can just look at your county rules and regulations to see if you're allowed to have chickens. They probably won't allow you to have roosters, um, but because they make so much noise, but you can have hens. Um, like in, if you watch the presentation on Monday, um, I talked about chickens and how the hens do not need a rooster to actually lay eggs. So anybody have any questions about any other egg structures or any of that uh, that I've talked about as egg inspector? Um, the poach, I'm sorry, the egg industry, the producing, uh, how the hen goes about producing eggs, any questions about any of that stuff? All right, so how do you see inside an egg? Well, you can do a thing called candling. So candling is when you take a light and you shine it through the egg shell. Uh, this is used uh, to determine if the egg is fertilized and developing, or you can also use it to detect egg quality. You know, in that video I showed at the beginning, you saw the lady shining that light through there and she was candling those eggs to see if there were cracks in the shells, as well as if, um, if any of the embryos, I mean, any of the eggs have been fertilized or if there's any strange looking things inside the egg and things like that. Um, so you can do that same thing at home with your eggs. You can take a, uh, a light and I'm going to show you how to do this at the end because this, this is an activity I would like you guys to try at home. Um, uh, I have a whole bunch of little activities at the end, but so we'll talk about that later. Um, but you can, you can um, candle your own eggs. If you ever decide you want to uh, hatch your own eggs and you get an incubator and things like that, you would actually candle them to make sure that they're developing along the, you know, the right schedule. Uh, make sure your, your eggs are actually fertilized and things like that. So candling is very important. Um, for detecting egg quality as well as egg development. 
So what I would do when I would go to the school, I would actually, we, I actually teach this class in person and I bring in all these little flashlights and I bring eggs in, I bring old eggs in and I bring, you know, freshly laid eggs that have been laid within either a day or that morning of me going because um, I have chickens and, you know, I would allow the students to candle the eggs and they would have to uh, tell me the freshness and there was always a little other test they would have to do. Um, so you can do these things at home. They're real easy. If you have some eggs, you can do them at home. It doesn't matter if you have brown eggs or white eggs. Um, you can do this. You can also do it with other uh, bird eggs as well. It's just that some of those are kind of hard. The smaller they are, the more fragile they can be sometimes. And, you know, uh, it might be hard for you to not crack them while you're trying to uh, candle them. But it can be done pretty much with any type of bird egg. So how do you test egg freshness at home? You can do what is called a float test. So fresh eggs, uh, when placed in a, uh, water, if they're fresh, they should always stay at the bottom, uh, laying kind of horizontally. Um, as that egg starts to age, the air cell gets uh, a lot bigger, and it allows for more air to come into the egg. So what happens is the egg will start to float. Um, once the egg is very, very old, it'll just float at the top. So in the pictures here, um, we have... In the first picture, we have where the egg, egg is dropped in the water. Um, if it's a fresh egg, it'll just stay down in the bottom, and it'll just be laying horizontally. As that, If you check that same egg maybe a week or so later, what it'll do is it'll start to float or bob up and down, um, and it may even stand up. Um, but eventually, as the egg is really, really old, uh, it'll just float at the top. And these are the eggs you don't want to use. If it starts to stand up or bobbing, you want to use that egg soon. But if it's floating at the top, you don't want to use that. It's just too old. Um, if the air cell is big, that means other things have probably gotten into there and it's just probably not any good. If you probably crack it open, it probably smells bad too. Um, so just, you know, this is one little simple test you could do to test the quality of your eggs at home. You can also use the albumin and uh, candling. So when you crack open a, a fresh egg, the, the thick albumin should be like right underneath that yolk. And then the... Um, the thin albumin should only be like a little bit watery. It should just kind of spread out just a little bit. The fresher the egg, that thick albumin will like be, you know, it'll hold that yolk up and it'll like support it. Also, if you candle that egg, what you would see, you would you would see a little bit of the yolk in there. And you could also see the air cell. The air cell should be very, very small. Um it should be tiny. It shouldn't be extremely small. It should be it should be a decent size, but not like, you know, taking up the whole uh, wide end of the egg. Also, if you did that floating test, the egg should be sitting at the bottom of the water. Now, in this picture over here, these eggs are two to three weeks old, and you can see that thick albumin. Hold on, let me switch windows here. This thick albumin that's right here is now watery and it's like it's kind of you know mixed in with the thin albumin also you can see more of the yolk now because the albumin has become watery and it's not thick anymore versus when it was a day old you could really not you know barely barely see the yolk inside of there because that albumin was you know it was you know thick and it was supporting the egg but as that egg has gotten older it has deteriorated also this egg is starting to stand in the water um, so it's getting to the point where the air cell is also, you know, become very big and it's allowing more air in there. So this is allowing that egg to actually float. So Yo Folk 3 said, in the Philippines, eating eggs at 20 days and over are normal delicacy. I forgot the name of it. Saw Andrew Zimmerman old food show eating them yeah so um if they didn't if they didn't like wipe them off or anything the eggs can keep for a while i wouldn't eat a 20 day old egg that sat out in, but some people do um you know so it, every culture is different uh some people like to actually have the egg developing are you talking about the eggs that actually like were fertilized and they develop? Are you talking about old eggs that sit out? Because they have there's some cultures too that actually want a developing embryo in their egg. Um, 
And usually they use duck eggs, but they will use uh, chickens as well. But they'll actually let the embryo develop up to a certain point, and then they'll boil or they'll cook the egg somehow, and then they'll crack it open and they'll eat that developing embryo as, uh, along with whatever was left of that actual egg. So with pickling with eggs, what happens is the uh, moisture inside the egg uh, is replaced um, with salts and things. So it's kind of a preservation. So the eggs are, they're safe to eat, but they're probably full of uh, sodium because um, pickling, you know, that's what it does. It takes that moisture out and it prevents micro, if microorganisms don't have moisture, like bacteria and stuff doesn't have moisture, it can't grow. So the pickling, that allows for, um, you know, that preservation. But like I said, it has salt. So it could be a lot of sodium that's in there. Good questions, guys. Let's see. Okay. So... That's the end of the actual presentation, um, but I want you guys to try this fun activity at home. So what you're going to need, you're going to need um, some chicken eggs. They can be brown or white. Uh, you need a flashlight, or you can use a cell phone light. Uh, you need a clear container with some water that will allow an egg to float or be submerged. Um, you also need a plate. So what you're going to do in the beginning is that you're going to candle the egg to see if you can find the yolk and the air cell. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do this in a second. Um, I don't have a flashlight, but I do have my cell phone. Um, I forgot the little flashlights I have at my office. Um, but like I said, you can use your cell phone if you'd like to do that as well. Next, you're going to do the float test to test the freshness of the egg. And then finally, you're going to crack open an egg, and you're going to see if you can find all the structures I discussed in this presentation. So you're going to try to find the yolk, the germ germ germinal disc, the, the calaise, um, the air cell inside of the uh, actual uh, egg, the membranes. You want to see the albumin, uh, both the thin and the thick. And then... Um, then, yeah, you can scramble it afterwards. <laughs> yes. Uh, you don't want the egg to go to waste, so don't don't put it on something that you can't eat it uh, if you still want to eat it. Um, but we're just I want you guys to just look at the structures um, to, you know, appreciate that this egg was actually, you know, laid to actually bring forth life. It wasn't just for us to eat. Um, and that this is a little science experiment at home that you guys can do. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, it doesn't take a lot. I mean, eggs are pretty cheap um, right now. Uh, we had a egg shortage last year, but this year they're they're kind of like especially white eggs. I think uh, there there's more eggs than there are people that want them. <clears throat> you guys are silly. <laughs> but before I do the demonstration, I want to um, just talk about Kiwi Produce Online. Again, this is my school website. This is where you can go and you can find all the courses that I teach, um, as well as, you know, when I do these lives, I have some, I have a whole section for the lives for not this particular one, but other classes where uh, you can go on there and you can find all the information, links and things that I shared, um, uh, any per pertinent information, like when I did the, um, Oh, I haven't even done that one yet because I was supposed to do a cicada presentation yesterday and my computer and my um, some reason Google would not they would not work right yesterday. So I couldn't do that. So we're actually doing a cicada presentation tomorrow. Um, but I have like a, a PDF of the uh, presentation that I did. I actually had wrote an article a few years ago in a magazine that I was published in uh, about cicadas and things. So um if you go to the school website, there's a lot of information on there. Some of it's free, but some of it you have to purchase as well. Um, it's reasonably priced. Um, I want you guys to learn this stuff. I want you to learn about agriculture, you know, the whole um, industry beyond just farming. You know, I talk about farming. Um, I talk about, um, you know, a lot of different things, but agriculture 
all together, it is not just farming. Uh, like I just talked about being an agricultural inspector, you can be a, a, a poultry scientist, you can be a food scientist. And so I just try to offer these classes to teach uh, youth, but now I'm seeing adults are even interested about these different things uh, that are, you know, fall under the whole branch of agriculture. So next week, um, I think I'm going to talk about wheat and I'm going to talk about uh, maybe chocolate or something. So that's going to be next week, uh, agri-science uh, school activities. So I'll do some lives about that, but then there'll also be some, you know, coursework that you can actually purchase if you want to go further and studying those particular industries and stuff. <clears throat> All right, so here's my information. You want to contact me, but I wanted to demonstrate to you guys how to go about candling the egg with your cell phone, um, the finding the air cell, um, and things like that. So if you want to contact me, you can always contact me by email, urbanfarmsister at gmail.com. You can visit the school website or you can find me on social media, Urban Farm Sister. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Um, so just look for me on there. All right, so let me switch to the camera here. Okay, so I have some eggs. I have a container of water. I have a plate here. I have a pencil. And I have my cell phone because I don't have my little flashlight. So if you're going to, uh, once you candle the eggs, you want to turn the lights off. I turn them down because it's hard to see sometimes. So I'm going to turn this light off for a second. It's still kind of bright in here, but oh well. So to candle an egg, if it'll pick it up correctly. To candle an egg, you're going to take your uh, light and you're going to try to shine it through. I'm trying to see if it'll let me pick up the air cell. Probably not. It's giving a bad reflection here. I'll see if it does better on the brown egg. Oh, this hair cell is big. This egg is kind of old. I save old eggs just for learning purposes. Um, it's hard to tell, but the air cell is all this area up here is the air cell. Uh, so this egg is old, so we're going to see if it actually floats or if it will uh, sink in the water or if it stay at the bottom of the water. Um, trying to sell it on these. So these air, I don't know if you guys can see that. See this light? Uh, I don't like the way it's doing that. You guys, if you if you have an egg at home and you have a light, it'll probably show. It'll definitely show it better in person. The camera is trying to like focus in on the light, so you can't see this air cell. But I'll I'll circle it so I can show you where it where where it is on this particular egg. So after you candle your eggs, I want you to circle where you find the air cells at. Um, so I can you even see the pencil mark on there. <laughs> okay, so there's the the, the air cell. I, I, I uh, circled it with the pencil, so it's right in this area. Um, so these eggs are kind of old, so we're going to test and see how they look. Uh, how they actually float, would they float or would they sink or what they'll do to test their quality. So, guys, you can see that it's staying at the bottom of the water. So this is one of the white eggs I have. The air cell is kind of big, 
Um, so I thought it might have like stood up, but I guess it's it's still kind of okay. Uh, it had it like stood up like this, that would have meant like you know you need to use this egg soon. And I want to try this brown one because it has a really big air cell. So you see it, it's actually standing up a little bit. And I, I expected that because this air cell is kind of, um, the air cell in this egg is really, it's really big. It's, it's about pretty much this whole area at the top of the egg. Um, now I have some really old eggs that I have in my office. Um, and the air cells are like halfway down the egg now. And they, yeah, they'll just like float. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, you need really need to get rid of them. Like, if you crack them open, they smell horrible. Um, but I keep them just to teach, uh, to show people how, um, these eggs, how, how you can test that quality. Um, so yeah, that's what I want you guys to try at home. I want you guys to, uh, I want you to take the eggs. I want you to do this with the children. I want you guys to take some eggs. Um, you can, get, you can do it like at breakfast time before you actually cook them. Um, I want you to candle them with the cell phone or with a flashlight to see if you can find the air cell. Uh, also look at the egg quality, see if there's any cracks in the shell and things like that. Um, and see if you can actually see the yolk in there. And then um, I want you to do the float test. If the float test is, uh, is it good, It'll it'll stay at the bottom. If it's bad, it'll float to the top. If it's floating to the top, I don't want y'all using that egg for that morning. Um, and then I want you to crack the egg open. I'm not going to crack an egg open because I know for a fact you're not going to be able to see those structures on this camera. Um, I might hook up my microscope and because I have a dissected microscope here and see if I can get those things to focus in. I might just do a video. I can show you up close of what those structures look like. Um, but I want you guys to try that. <clears throat> so Taisha said, good thing about being adults is we can play with our food without our parents yelling at us. Well, I want you guys to do this activity with your kids. So, um, they might start breaking eggs <laughs> after the fact, uh, after this day, like they'll, they'll go in there and test all the eggs from now on. Um, <clears throat> Taisha said, Girl, you're wasting good food, my good food. I can hear my mom now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the eggs are not wasted. Um, you can put them back in the refrigerator. Um, uh, even the one you wrote on, you know, the graphite and the pencil, it's not gonna really affect you any. And you're not eating the shell anyway, so it doesn't, you know, it'd be all right. <clears throat> so anybody have any questions about eggs, about chickens, about the poultry industry, about eggs? Uh, hen reproduction, um, anything about kiwi produce, any of that. Like I say, next week's activities, they are going to be, um, I haven't decided, I know one of them is going to be talking about wheat, um, and we'll have an activity. We'll try to find a simple, like, bread recipe that you guys can make, um, and then, um, I haven't decided the second activity. I'm trying to try to do one of these. I'm gonna to try to do two of these a week, um, so you guys can, you know, learn about some different industries. I might even do some entomology related or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of different industries that uh, fall under agriculture. So yo folks said, so does hen and the rooster have sex daily, or does the hen produce the hen produce her own sperm? For her to produce eggs, she doesn't need to have sperm. Um, she does have a little organ that kind of stores up sperm in there uh, after she mates. But she can lay an egg without a male being present or without mating. Uh, once she reaches sexual maturity, most most chickens, it takes about six months to reach sexual maturity. Um, and you can tell that by looking at their waddle and their comb when they turn really, really red. That usually means they're sexually mature. Uh, the same thing with the rooster when his waddle and comb turns really, really red. That means he's sexually mature. Um, he will also, you know, exhibit um, colorful feathers and things like that that the females do not have. Uh, 
uh, waste not. It will be a great omelet. Thank you so much for this. Oh, you're welcome, Taisha. Roll said, you missed my question earlier. I had a dozen of eggs. Every one of them were double twins. Okay, so double yolks, that usually means um, a few things. It can mean the chickens were stressed when they were laying the eggs. It can mean that they got a lot of feed, and so they're producing double yolks. Um, and then some chickens are just, you know, kind of weird, and they lay double yolks. Um, was that was that a uh, was that a a dozen of eggs that you bought from the grocery store, or was it one that you got from like you know somebody that raises chickens in your neighborhood or something, or a local farmer? Taisha said, we had free-range hens in Hawaii that would sing a song after they lay eggs. Yes. So the hens are very noisy when they lay the eggs. And that's how I know that's how I know in the morning when they're about to lay one, they'll, uh, after they lay it, they do make a lot of noise. And I, I think it kind of hurts. I mean, even though they're pushing them out every day, I, they still can't be comfortable. Um, but, yeah, they'll do, they do make a sound at the end of laying those eggs. Yo, folks said... Chefs separate the whites from the yolks when preparing certain dishes. Why? Uh, if they don't want the dish to be yellow, they'll take the yolk out of there um, and they'll just keep the egg whites. Uh, eggs are used to, you know, bind things together. Like when you're making a cake or something and you put eggs in there, that helps keep that flour formed together and it gives it like that fluffiness and, and, and things like that. But if you don't want your your product to have a yellow color to it, you just take those yolks out of there. Um, there's always been this back and forth about, you know, eggs not being healthy for your heart and things like this. Uh, so a lot of times people take the yolks out because they say it has too much fat and some other stuff in there. But in reality, um, there's been studies to dispute all that. So it's up to you. Um, people have been eating eggs forever. Uh, and it wasn't just chicken eggs. They used to eat other bird eggs as well. Um, and there was no, you know heart disease and things that was related to the eggs, uh, the people didn't have that. It was when we started introducing other things into our food system that all those things started to show up, all those, um, you know, hormones and uh, chemicals and things that can affect your, you know, heart rate, too much sodium, things like that are things that can affect your uh, circulatory system and things. Rose said, I can't wait for the bread. I bought you last week. Laugh out loud. I don't know why. At the grocery store. I see. <laughs> no, the shalazi cannot be called the umbilical cord because the umbilical cord would be like in humans. That would connect it to the placenta, but it would actually be transporting nutrients from the mother to the child. Um, the chalazi does not do that. All it does is anchor the yolk into the, uh, it anchors the yolk. So it kind of, say it's just the yolk. It's a chalazi up here and one down here. And it keeps the yolk just centered inside this egg shell. Because if it wasn't, if it didn't have that anchor, it would just be hitting up against the shell constantly. And then that would, you know, cause uh, problems with the chick that's developing and things like that. Um, also, it would, the, the, the chick, would always be pressed against one side so it keeps it in the center so it's not just pressed against the shell. Oh, you said yeast. Okay. Okay. I was like, I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> um, let's see. Yo, folks said, have you ever heard of scrambled eggs being cooked with milk? I saw a lady do it, and then eggs were too yellow. Uh, well, some people put milk and things in there. Um, it depends on what they're trying to make with their eggs. Like, if you make French toast, you would add milk to the eggs. Um, if you're making uh, a number of dishes, like when you make a cake or something, you add eggs and you have to add milk to the batter and things. So um, I've never seen anybody put milk in their scrambled eggs, uh, but I've seen milk 
put in eggs for other egg dishes. So it depends on what she, if that's the way she likes to eat it. I've never ate it that way. Um, honestly, I'm not an egg fan. Uh, I have all these eggs with my chicken play. Um, I usually just sell my eggs. I, I'll use them to cook, like, you know, recipes and things. But I just, I can't, personally, I just can't go and eat, like, scrambled eggs. That just, it just, it's nauseating to me. Um, if I do eat an egg, it has to be hard boiled. Yo, folks say, oh, okay, I bet Shalazi means chain or anchor in Latin. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, I think that's what it means. Um, and that's exactly what it does. It's just like a cord that keeps that egg uh, floating in the center of, uh, keeps the yolk floating in the center of the egg. Oh, okay, yeah, you bought yeast last week. Yeah, I'm going to have to try to find a little simple uh, uh, recipe because uh, making bread is actually a long process because you have to, if you're using the yeast, you have to let it rise for so many hours. Then you have to punch it down. You have to let it rise again. So usually once you mix up the the dough, you're not going to make that bread that same day. It might be, you know, the next day because it has to like rise for hours now. Some, there's some things you can do with your oven. You can make it kind of like a Dutch oven where it has like um, all this humidity and it'll help it rise a lot faster. Uh, but that's a lot of work and a lot of people don't have the equipment in their home to do that. Um, but if you have just like, you know, some flour, yeast, salt, um, sugar, and water, that's usually like the most simplest uh, dough you can make. Um, so I'm going to look up some recipes and I'm going to test them out before next week just to see which is going to be the quickest and easiest for people to do um, so that they they can, you know, practice learning how to make bread at home with just, you know, a few simple ingredients. Rose said, yes, I've seen many people put milk in eggs. They say it makes it fluffy. I don't like it. Yeah, I've only put milk in eggs is when I'm making French toast. <clears throat> Taisha said, we heard about the dangers of eating raw eggs, but they really, well, are they really dangerous? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up because um, I needed to actually talk about that too. So after you handle these eggs, um, I want you guys to make sure you wash your hands. Um, the reason being, and also wipe off your phone if you use your phone as your, your, your flashlight. Reason being is... Um, Eggs can actually have bacteria. Salmonella is one. And Campylobacter is another. And I talked about these slightly on Monday. Um, but they can actually be inside the egg. Because I told you uh, here in the United States, we, we clean off that whole bloom layer. Um, but even if the bloom layer is on there, those particular bacteria live in the digestive tract of chickens. Um, so salmonella doesn't actually affect chickens, neither does campylobacter and a number of other bacteria that are enteric. Um, they don't affect them or make them sick, but they, when they go to the bathroom, they actually release those uh, bacteria um, and they can actually show up on the egg. So chickens don't have, you know, two holes like we do. They don't have a hole where they, you know, defecate and they have a hole where, you know, they lay an egg, or in our case, it's like we give birth. Uh, everything comes out that same cloaca hole. Uh, so a lot of times when chickens are laying eggs, they actually will poop as well. Um, and so there could be poop on the outside of here, or, you know, since that's the same hole, if there's any bacteria in that cloaca opening, it can get onto the egg. Um, and so if you're handling these eggs, even though they've been washed, you can't wash away every bacteria. There's always going to be some there. Um, so I would just want to make sure when you're handling these eggs, when you're cracking them open and you're looking at the structures and things that you uh, do it on a surface that, you know, you can easily clean. Um, and then you, you immediately either cook the egg or, you know, get rid of it. And then you make sure you wash your hands um, so you're not, um, you know, contaminate yourself with Campylobacter or Salmonella. Salmonella, we all hear about Salmonella outbreaks. Um, chickens are one source of salmonella, but there's other animals that can transmit salmonella. Reptiles are another. So people that usually have reptiles as pets, they don't wash their hands. It's the same thing. It lives in their digestive tract. So if they go to the bathroom, 
and you know they're cleaning out their cages and you know picking up their waste and things or they're touching the things that that animal had crawled on they could have bacteria on them and they could, the person could pick up that bacteria and you know put it into put their hands in their mouth or in their eyes or you know a number of places and infect themselves with a bacterial infection um <clears throat> So that, that applies to the eggs. That applies to if you're handling raw chicken, uh, if you're handling live chickens, always make sure you're washing your hands afterwards. That 20 second washing your hands will do you some justice. Rose said, wiping now, Corona got me scared. So, you know, I talked about the antibacterial and the, all that other stuff and those wipes. Those things will nine times out of ten work on bacteria. So that's Campylobacter, that's um, Salmonella. They don't work very well on viruses um, because a lot of that stuff is specifically targeted for bacteria, not maybe a virus. Um, so yeah, just make sure you wipe off your phone if you use your phone as a light. Um, I want to see you guys, I want you guys to take pictures when y'all actually do this, but I want you guys to share that with me of you actually doing these experiments at home. Because uh, the kids really enjoyed it when I went to the schools. Um, they really enjoyed, like, you know, actually being able to hold an egg. I, I, I guess, I guess like, like you were saying earlier, their parents don't let, let them play with the food. Um, but they need to I let them at least play with one egg so they can learn. And they know that this, you know, this is a, a vessel for life, like, if it's been fertilized and incubated, you could have a new chick there. Have you ever heard of an egg cooking style named poached or poached eggs? Yes, I've heard of that. Um, I forget how they go about. Is that the poaching is the one? Is that where they, is that where they bake the egg? Or they boil it, but it's open. Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, that is a that is a way that they uh, <clears throat> that is a way of uh, cooking eggs. You know, they can scramble them, hard boil them. Um, people make quiche with them. That's when they mix them and they bake them. I don't, I don't like that stuff. Um, like I said, I'm not a fan of eggs of eating eggs. I'm a fan of studying them though, but not eating them. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, there's a lot of ways to cook eggs. All right, Nikia said, hey, she says she will. Hold on, Nikia, hey, says she will do the experiment with her son. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is the season for dying eggs. And... Um, the reason that the dye stays in the egg is because the egg is porous. Like I was talking about earlier, it has actual holes in that shell. So, um, and if you use uh, if you use vinegar with your dye, it'll give a deeper color. Nikia Hay said, "Boil it." Uh, your folks said, what is your opinion about the century old sport name, cockfighting? Mexicans still co conducting the fight in my old neighborhood in Chicago. Yeah, people still do that everywhere. Um, it's very gruesome. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a cockfight. Um, we talked about the, the roosters on Monday, and I talked about those spurs that they have uh, right at the bottom, before you get to their, uh, right at the bottom of their um, shanks, there's a spur that comes out, and the roosters have really long spurs because they use them as uh, defense. Um, all chickens have them, but the hens are a lot shorter, and the males have a lot longer ones because they use them to fight other males, and they will fight to the death. Those spurs are very, they have these sharp claws on it, and they will uh, kill each other, and so it is a gruesome sport. Nakia says, hey, yes, it's crack it and boil it. That's what I thought. And I've seen some people uh, bake eggs, too. Like, they would crack them open, they boil it, and they put it in the oven for a little while as well. People do a lot of things with eggs. Um, you can, Like I say, 
Chickens are not the only eggs that we consume. Uh, people also eat quail eggs. They're just really tiny. And I had some quail eggs last year. I actually hatched and things. Um, all the quail so far have uh, passed away now, but um, I hatched them and I shared the video of them hatching and, you know, them developing into adults and things. They don't have a really long lifespan. Um, and I don't think they do well in captivity. They're more of like a game bird. And I think that's why, you know, they didn't just last as long as they probably would have outdoors. I mean, they lasted for about a year. Um, usually they can last for about a year or two. Um, I just think they would have did better had they just been outdoors not versus, you know, like they're kind of hard. They're not really domesticated like a chicken because every time I came around, they were still running around like they didn't know who I was, <laughs> even though I fed them every day and stuff. Poacher, poachers is dipping it in water. I usually throw a raw egg in my ramen noodles. Poach egg, crack egg into near boiling water. Let's see. Ali said vinegar or lemon juice is the water keeps the albumin egg together for most part. And shimmer, simmering water, sorry. I can't wait to own some chickens. Are you going to get chickens this year, Ali? Like the poet said, what other birds can we eat eggs? I just went over that. Um, I said we can eat quail. You can eat roots, um, um, ostrich, emu. Uh, if you go outside and you really want to eat some robins, they're probably going to be fertilized, but you can eat those as well. So. Uh, there's a number of different bird eggs. A lot of times when people are stuck out in the wild, uh, they will go to resort to, you know, robbing eggs from bird nests. Um, actually, they're all going to be the same because they're all going to do the same thing. They're just, they're there to grow another bird. Yes, your folk, uh, they will fight to the death. Uh, so usually you'll end up with one of those chickens being dead. So the winner, the winner is the one that doesn't die. Uh, and so, you know, that's the person that will get the prize or whatever the money is or all that. All that. <clears throat> Let's see. Rose said, I will do this experiment with my grandson over the phone. Yeah, let them watch the video. Um, I hope I explained it. I hope I explained it well enough. And then, like I say, with the plate, I just want you to crack the egg open um, so you can see the air cell on the inside. You can see that little bubble inside of there. Um, you can see all the structures. See if, you can, see if you can find that geminal disc. It's that little white spot that you'll find on the actual yolk. Um, and look for the shalazy. Uh the albumin, look at the albumin to see if it's how thick it is. If it's a fresh egg, it'll be really thick. If it's if it's kind of watery uh, and, and it blends in with the thin albumin and the egg is kind of old, so you want to test that out. Also, when you candle it, look and see if there's cracks in the egg when you're candling it. Um, and like I say, it, I mean, this is a little science experiment. I call it agri-science uh, that you can do at home with ease and it doesn't cost a lot of money. And it will teach you a lot about, you know, eggs, about chickens, about development. Um, and then talk to your grandson, too, about, you know, you don't have to get into the gory details of the structures of the female. But just tell him, tell him, like, you know, it takes about 27 hours for an egg to de for a chicken to develop an egg. And, you know, it's a process of each thing has to be laid down and it takes hours for each one of those things to be laid down. Yes, there are turkey eggs. People do eat turkey eggs. They eat duck eggs also. I forgot about ducks. Uh, people will eat ducks. Ducks. Um, some people are eating, eating like goose and swan if they have those. So, I mean, pretty much any domesticated bird, they will eat the eggs. I I haven't heard anybody eating pigeon eggs, but I know people keep pigeons and they do eat pigeons. Uh, so I can't see them not, you know, actually eating their eggs as well. <clears throat> Yeah, turkey eggs are kind of big. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen an ostrich egg, but it's the same concept. Um, 
it's, it's going to look sim- exactly the same on the inside. It's just going to be a lot bigger. So ostrich eggs can be about that big. Um, and they sell them. They're really expensive at, you know, like, you know, those international grocery stores. But if you cracked it open, it would be the exact same thing. You would see those exact same structures. It's just that it's just a bigger bird, so it has a bigger egg. So Ali said, hmm, so chicken eggs because chickens domesticate easily and then can't get away as easily, perhaps. Um, No, because people, they actually own emu, people own ostrich, and they lay eggs. It's just that chickens lay eggs. You can get them to lay eggs every day. Some of these other birds, they only might lay, they might lay like a clutch of eggs. Remember I talked about that's how many eggs a chicken will lay or a bird will lay in a day. I mean, uh, consecutive days. They might lay a clutch of five eggs and then they won't lay any more eggs for another month or so. But with chickens, you can get them to lay eggs every day. Um, Now, they do, there are some chickens that become what is called broody, where they'll try to sit on those eggs, even though they're not fertilized. And so sometimes those birds will stop laying and you have to either let them go through that broodiness or what what a lot of people do is they'll actually get eggs that need to be hatched and they'll just uh, take and let that broody chicken hatch those eggs out so they'll have, you know, new chickens uh, that they can raise on their, on their, uh, in their yard or their farm or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but a chicken will pretty much most breeds that they have now that are layers, they will lay an egg every day for pretty much most of the year. Um, and I, so we talked about it on Monday about the lighting and all that, how it affects the laying. Um, but these other birds, they may not lay an egg every day. So that's why, you know, they're not always a preferred uh, choice. Um, an ostrich is not going to lay an egg every day. Um, quail, they'll lay eggs. They'll lay a lot of eggs during the week uh, if they're not stressed out and things. Um, but the chicken, for the most part, you know you're going to get an egg every day. So Ali said, I've seen ostrich eggs used in culinary industry, thick, hard shell, and yield the equivalent of two dozen chicken eggs. Yes, they're very big, and that shell is very thick um, to crack. It's not like you did these eggs where you just hit them on the table. No, nah, you're going to take a little work to crack those open. Um, but like I say, when you crack it open, that egg shell is made with the same calcium carbonate that this is made out of. It's going to have those same structures on the inside. They're just going to be a lot bigger. Taisha said ostrich egg, and then Ali said, so they only lay one at a time, just to be clear. But if you don't check for a few days at a time, you may see few eggs there when you go check. Yes, so they only lay one egg every 23 to 27 hours. So they only lay one egg a day. So if you went and you didn't check for three days and you came in on that third day, if you came in after she had laid the egg, you should have three eggs in there. Um. But no, they do not lay multiple eggs at once. Now, we talked about the double yolks. What happens is those double yolks, there's two yolks inside that egg. And why that, how that happens is two, um, two eggs are passed out of the ovary at once. Two yolks are passed out of the ovary at once. And then they're, they're kind of, they go through that whole process together. And so then they're encased into that eggshell together. Um, but uh, yeah, they're only gonna lay one, only gonna lay one egg a day. So chickens, Ali said, uh, chickens for frequency, cool. Yes. Yeah, so, if you have any other questions? Um, because I'm over my time. But if you have any questions, I'd like to answer them. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about as far as chickens are concerned. So you know. I only touched on one aspect of poultry, which is, you know, eggs. I didn't even get into the actual meat uh, broilers. Those are the ones that we actually use for meat. I didn't get into um, the uh, the chickens that we use for, um, what do you call it, for feathers and things like that. So there's like a whole bunch more that we could have talked about. Um, I could have talked about, you know, the scheduling, uh, how you get the breeder, I mean, the bro- the egg layers to go about laying eggs, talk about the lighting, talk about nutrition, talk about all types of stuff. 
So this is only one thing. There's like hundreds of different breeds of chickens. There's chickens that are used for show. Um, there's dual purpose. Those are the ones that we use for eggs and meat. Um, and so in that uh, course, you know, I, I cover some of that and I have some activities like where I want you guys to do like some research things um, <clears throat> where you go and actually research about the industry, like see how much money the poultry industry actually makes. It's billions of billions of dollars that are made each year uh, through the poultry industry for these uh, commercial farmers as well as small farmers. I mean, if you're producing uh, farm raised you know, free range chickens, people want your products. Or if you're raising, you know, broilers and, you know, you're not using the hormones and they're free range and they're actually just feeding on, you know, things outside and they're not being pumped with hormones and stuff, people will want your product. So there's a lot of things that I did not cover. I only scratched the surface, but I, that's why I do this because I want you guys to actually go and, you know, research more and look into it more. Uh, nobody ever told me a, a vaccine that uses eggs <laughs> that might be your guys homework that's what i want you guys to do i want you guys to research some vaccines that use eggs and what are they used for in that vaccine's production um i'm not going to tell you the diseases but i want you guys to research that and i want you to email it to me urban farm sister at gmail.com um and the person that gets it right I am going to send you some watermelon seeds. So um, <clears throat> I want you guys to research that for me. Um, so I want to see no answers in the in the in the uh, in here. I want you guys to research it, and I want you to write me a little paper up. I make this. I make this, this is a little homework assignment. It can be for adults or children. I want you to look up a disease and tell me how the eggs are used in the production of a vaccine for that disease. Um, when I used to work uh, at University of Georgia, I used to actually have to uh, use eggs, and we used to take shorebird samples. Um, so those are birds that are, they're wild birds like ducks and geese and things. We take water samples where these birds were to see if cer a certain disease was out circulating in the population. Um, so that's kind of a little uh, little cheat that I gave you guys uh, for one disease, but there's other diseases that they make vaccines for and they use eggs. So I want you guys to, if you can just research that, write me a little paper up, email it to me. You know, we in isolation anyway. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Y'all can use y'all minds to uh, uh, do some poultry research. If you don't want to do that one, I want you to research, uh, look up, um, find me 10, um, 10, uh, you know, businesses or corporations or whatever that use chickens, uh, use chickens, either chickens themselves, their eggs or things in their production. So an example would be like Kentucky Fried Chicken, they use chicken, they use a the poultry. I want you guys to find 10 companies, 10 businesses, 10 uh, search firms, whatever that use or the poultry industry, if the poultry industry wasn't there, that, that business or whatever, uh, you know, survive. I want you to know, I want you to look up 10 of them that actually are, you know, dependent on the, the, um, that wasn't there. Okay, my mic had muted for a second.
Okay, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I think it should be working now. I had to switch to the different mic. Um, but as I was saying, um, I'm gonna make a little section on the school website. You still can't hear me? I'm gonna make a little section on the school website for you guys' homework assignment, uh, researching, and I want you guys to submit it on there. Um, so it'll be up in about an hour or so. Um, but yeah, I would want you to write a little paper to just say like, uh, uh, I want 10 companies that rely on the poultry industry. And then I want um, to know a vaccine that uses the poultry industry, or actually uses eggs in its production. And um, at what at what level is it, is it actually to make the vaccine or is it to test the vaccine or whatever. Um, but I want you guys to research that and give you something to do. Uh, since everybody be talking about they bored. There's so many things y'all could be researching and doing. So I'm give y'all some homework. Um, but yeah, so I'll make that little section and you guys can submit it on there. You have to make an account on my school website. But uh, I'll let you guys um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll let you guys do that. And then, like I say, if you're interested in, you know, some more activities as far as the poultry industry is concerned, I will be uploading the uh, exercises and the handouts and the questions and little quizzes and stuff that I would normally do for the children um, and you can buy those and you know you can further learn about this industry um, and then all the things that it has to offer as far as the poultry industry and like I said next week we're going to have some more uh, different activities like I said I know one of them is going to be wheat and we're going to talk about bread and then I haven't decided what the second one's going to be yet it might be um, the entomology thing, or it might be chocolate, or it might be even popcorn. I might do the popcorn. Um, but again, it's, it's going to give you some activities you can do at home real easy. Um, most of the time, you have the stuff at home already. If you don't, you can get it from the grocery store. We're still allowed to go to the grocery store. Um, so if I do the popcorn, like you can go get popcorn kernels and you can pop them at home. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll post that on my uh, social media site so you guys will know what's coming up. And I'll post a list of supplies that you'll need so you guys can do that activity uh, once I explain how to do it. All right. So I thank you guys for uh, signing in tonight and watching this uh, live. I appreciate you guys. I thank you for all your support. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. If you'd like to become a patron on my Patreon, please visit patreon.com forward slash urban farm sister. Um, you know, I like doing this, but it costs money to do these types of things. And, you know, I, I can keep content coming, but I'm going to need some little financial support eventually. Um, so you guys can help by doing that, by becoming a patron or by subscribing to my YouTube channel so that I can get to the point where I can actually monetize things and things like that. So I thank you guys for your support. Have a good evening. And I will actually see a lot of you tomorrow because i'm going to talk about cicadas so if you're interested in that log on i'll be talking about cicadas um and then on uh saturday i have a webinar that i'm actually doing it's a paid webinar uh we're talking about the hemp industry uh for here in ohio kentucky indiana and tennessee uh so if you live in those areas uh i'll be having a webinar talking about uh how to get started in the hemp industry uh, in those areas. And then the following weekend, we'll be covering Virginia, um, North Carolina, and South Carolina. And then the week after that, we'll cover Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. So if you live in any of those states and you're interested in maybe getting into the hemp industry, um, you might want to join those webinars. They're $35. Um, and it'll cover a lot of information and you'll be uh, have a lot of information available to you as far as you know how to fill out applications and things like that. So Hope you guys are interested. If you're interested, I hope you guys uh, look into that. Um, and again, I'll be back tomorrow talking about cicadas and a whole bunch of other stuff next week. So you guys have a good evening. Uh, thank you, yo folk. Uh, I'll see you hopefully tomorrow. And goodbye.